Hello, people. It's Poet, and we are back on Time Shot. Now, today, uh, got a few things to talk about. First of all, this is a re-record, which I haven't done in a long, 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 long time. Um, and if you know what a re-record is, well, it's pretty out. It speaks for itself, but uh, it's where I've recorded a whole episode, uh, and this time I even like I uploaded the episode, edited, uploaded. It was ready to launch, like my finger on the fire trigger, and I pulled back and I was like, you know what, that wasn't really quite the way that I wanted to put it, um, not that it was wrong, um, not that I was was incorrect or that it was bad, but just, you know what, I feel like I could have I done, it, it wasn't interesting enough even to me, <laughs> if I'm to be honest. Uh, and when it's not interesting enough for me, then I feel like, okay, well, then, you know, it's not, definitely not going to be, because I love me. And if it's not interesting for me, then, well, you know, who would it be interesting for? Um, okay, so I'm here at spawn, and I'm kind of just looting and pillaging, um, specifically for Silk Touch. And these, now that I see these. Because, um, we were talking about building a mini-games area. I know that Adoram started working on one. And a few of the members were like, oh yeah, just take from my base at spawn. Fortune and looting. Unbreaking, looting. Silk, <gasps> silk touch. Ooh, what? All those mending books have been here this whole time? Is it weird? I I know I know Edson's gone. I know he's gone. I just still feel weird about just taking. I couldn't just take. I feel like I need to at least give a diamond in place. I should almost take this base over. Like not this whole base. I don't I don't want that. Um, but like this little uh, the booth idea. Put it in m one of my shop stalls or something. Um, not that I'd be turning a profit or anything, but for those who do still play it from time to time, it might be nice. Um, so I got the silk touch that I wanted. That's very good. Now, what should I put it on? Um, specifically for packed ice, actually, which is why I grabbed... Actually, let me quickly check Edson's chest as well, just in case he might have a little bit of packed ice here and there. Ooh, here and there. I don't know what he's got what he had I'm sure that I probably took it already sand is also something oh those aren't full of sand they're just like placeholders for sand I see I'm sure one of them is full but ah not that one okay there we go so that's all the packed ice I think I'll need for now, glass. Um, I don't see any clear glass there. Maybe a sand chest? No. Although he's got uh, no, he doesn't even have sand that I can really use. Glass is what I was looking for. It looks like someone may have already taken it, or maybe he didn't have it, or maybe it was used. I don't know. Um, let's fly this way. So, first thing I wanted to talk about um, is actually something kind of uh, mild, and that's about what games I have been playing recently. But we f before we do that, I'm going to just quickly make a quick jump cut here. Yeah, just make a quick jump cut here, and I'll be right back. Sorry about that. Uh, this neighbor of mine has this truck that is so obnoxiously loud 
that like the entire house shakes and it's not like you know a loud just just loud um think of it as like it's just a guy's truck just like you know what he goes to work with and yet it sounds like a dump truck and i the first time i heard it it was like i was sitting here in my office and i was doing i, I don't know i was i was working i guess and i'm sitting there and then <laughs> the look of the look of horror on my face it sounded like there was this dump truck this massive like loud like dump truck is not even loud enough to explain how loud this this is but it was like the sound of like this massive dump truck backing into my driveway i thought I was like, what the heck is happening? Like, my whole house is shaking. It's so loud. Um, what's going on? And so I look out the window, and it's just, just this random, just, just this guy in his truck. That's it. Um, so, man, that kind, of, that kind of annoyed me. The fact that, you know, it's not necessary. It's not necessary to have a truck that that's that, that's that loud. You know what I mean? When, when you've got a truck that sounds like it could be a fire engine, and it's just what you go to work with, that's not necessary. What is that for? What what purpose does that serve? You know, I don't get it. I just don't understand it. And that's me coming. I, I'm a car guy. I like muscle cars. I like uh, gas guzzling cars that that are super sporty and have all the horses. But I don't understand it in terms of, like, a massive truck that is just loud. I don't quite understand it. Um, especially not in, like, we're not in the country. He's not, like, you, you know those truck commercials where he's driving up to the construction site and they launch this massive, like, train engine into the back of, of, of a truck from a crane. Um, or stacked with 17 hay bales or something it's not happening he's going we're in the city here he's driving to church or something i don't know in this massive loud like you know when you're driving around and this will this is only uh, of course for people who can drive um but when you're driving around and you've got your windows down it's like a nice um mildish summer day but you're like yeah you know what uh I think I'll have the windows down today to treat myself to some fresh air. And you're driving around, and you pull up to this red light or something, and then this massive, like, tractor trailer or something pulls up beside you, and it's this, like, exhaust-smelling, like, big loudness, and you just, like, you have to roll your windows up because it's so obnoxiously loud. That's what it's like, but from inside of my office, it feels that way. And it shouldn't ever feel that way. So anyway, that's why I <laughs> that's why I muted the stream. <coughs> Excuse me, not stream. Um, that's why I had to to make a quick pause. But uh, anyway, where was I? Oh yes, the games I'm playing. I figured I'd tell you guys about the games I'm playing, uh, just kind of as a favor to you guys. Um, actually, where am I? Where do I need to go? I need to go, I guess, to the end. Are shovels better? No. Picks are better? No. What's better at breaking ice? I guess nothing, really, but... Uh, so I could do it on a shovel. I could do it on an axe, even. It's got efficiency. It'll, it'll be fine. Do I have efficiency? Sharpness, knockback. No, I don't have efficiency. Probably should have grabbed one from Edson's booth. Um, hmm, that said, now I'm, well, this one's got efficiency, I wonder if I could change the, the enchant, oops, oops, oh, okay, I got everything I need to enchant in there, wait, what did I have, knockback, frostwalker protection, okay, nothing that I'm interested in. Um, yeah, I guess I better go to, better go to the end and get this, get a, get a shovel or something enchanted. Eh, you know what, might as well be a pick. Because at least then I could use it for other things. 
shovel, silk touch shovel. That would be horrible to do. Um, I've got 68 levels, in fact. Maybe I should just try enchanting straight up. Level 30, see what I get. Um, so what games am I playing? I'm playing Pixar. Just started playing it. Um, love it, actually. Uh, despite all of my hatred for Ark. And I say that with a little hesitation because I don't hate, hate Ark. I have a hundred, over a hundred episodes recorded in Ark. Um, it was enjoyable enough to, to allow me to do that. But I just feel like the developers dropped the ball big time on a lot of their bug fixes, on a lot of the development. They could have done so much more. They could have done it so much more towards dinosaur lovers. And kind of just, you could tell right away when they started adding, you know, 72 spikes to the head of a Triceratops. Tri mean, meaning three. Three horn. Three horn. Sure, let's just give it 72. You know, why not? It's a 72 atops. But... Um, as soon as you saw that, yeah, it was like, oh, okay, so they don't really care about dinosaurs, they're just, they're just doing this for, uh, for the lulls, for the monies, they don't care, um, yeah, so that, that really frustrated me, the bugs not being fixed frustrated me, the building system was pretty garbage, so I was frustrated there, um, Oh, okay. Perfect. Perfect. We should just... We should just make... Before I do any enchanting, let's just make our... Our, um... What's it called? We should just make a, a pick. <laughs> we should just make a pick. Um, and to do that, we need to craft a pick, first of all. Things in here are a little bit disjointed, not gonna lie. So Pixar, I I've been in love with. It's uh, really fun to me. Really, really fun. I'm breaking three. Actually, you know what? Let's do that. Efficiency four. Perfect. Cool. Now let's throw silk on it. And boom. There we go. Efficiency four. Silk touch. Unbreaking three. Um, it's exactly what I wanted. So good. 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 Is there anything that I really want to put, like, efficiency on? Maybe I could put it on a diamond axe. For what it's worth. There we go. May as well. Uh, came all this way, and basically, uh... Didn't really need any of those guys, or any of this equipment, really. Honestly. That's fine. Yeah, it's fine. Still got 49 levels, too. Should almost should I enchant another something? I don't know what I would enchant. I've got full protection, four armor. Yeah, I don't know. Could get a better sword. You know what? Let me enchant a better. <laughs> Let me see if I can get a better, like, sharpness four or something. Um, Let's just go right here. Use that. Oh, I don't have... Uh, I have nothing to, to craft a sword with. And that's not how you craft a sword anyway. Okay. Do this. So, yeah. Pixar, way better game in my opinion. Uh, the building is better. Uh, the speed at which you can do things is way better. Uh, the art style is way better. Uh, they're not... No. Looks, looks like I can't. Looks like I can't. you have sharpness in here anywhere? Uh, sharpness. Nope. Nope. Okay. Alright. Well, I'll just, uh, throw that there, I guess, for now. Throw that in there. Those back in there. Okay. Back we go. Um, yeah, it's, it's way faster, way better. The art style I'm, I'm on the fence about right now, I don't like so much the fact that they all look the same all the creatures look the same color for example um the blockiness i'm not 
a huge fan of for some of them. So I hope that improvements, and I'm sure that improvements will be made. Um, hopefully, though, to the design of things. Um, I also have a problem with the fact that, like, when you're in an area, it seems like 72,000 mobs spawn in. It's really just catering to people who just want to dive in and play and not worry about having to hunt for creatures. I don't know if I like that necessarily. I like a little bit of a challenge. Not extreme challenge, but give me a little bit of a challenge. So, uh, a few things that I hate, but most of all, I like that it's pixely, similar to Minecraft. It's got dinosaurs, two things that I love. So, honestly... Uh, I can't complain. It's it's really one of my dream games, honestly. So, that's one thing. Uh, number two, I've been playing. I actually beat uh, Wolfenstein Old Blood. It's the... Let me think. God, it's like the fifth, sixth game in the series. I don't know what. It comes before Wolfenstein 2. And after Wolfenstein... Um, the, the New Order... I don't, I don't know. There's been so many. There's been so many. I've played them all. I've played them all. If you know my channel, if you've been following for the longest of all, you would know that the very, very, very first video that I ever posted on YouTube ever, no, it wasn't Minecraft Dinosaurs. It wasn't Pixelmon. No, it wasn't Better Than Wolves. It was actually... Wolfenstein 3D from 1992. Not that I posted it in 92, but the game from 92. That's what I played. That's that's the first game that ever appeared on my channel. So I love this game. It has a huge history with me. Not just on YouTube, but like it was the first game that got me into programming, into computer games, really. Um, loved it. Favorite game of all time, basically. Um, so I've played them all. I've played uh, Wolfenstein 3D. Spear of Destiny, Return to Castle Wolfenstein, uh, the one that came right after that, which I can't really remember the name of, Return to Castle Wolfenstein 2, <laughs> and then the new one, Wolfenstein, and then I think it was New Order, Old Blood, and now Wolfenstein 2, the new Colossus. There's a lot of games in the series. I think I might have added one in by accident. Um... But either way, I've played them all. I've loved them all. I played this new one. Um, it's it's the one right before the latest one that came out. Because I haven't played the latest one either. Wolfenstein 2. So I wanted to kind of catch myself up. So to speak. And so, uh, yeah, I, I, I did. I caught myself up on it. And beat the whole game on normal difficulty. According to Steam... In 4.1 hours. Which to me... I, when the game was first released, I'm pretty sure it was a $30 to $50 game. Maybe even $60 game. To get only 4 hours. And it's not like you can replay the game. I mean, I, I suppose I could on a different difficulty if I, if I chose to. But for the most part, like the fact that I beat the entire game... In 4.1 hours is a little ridiculous. I still really enjoyed it, but it's just, it doesn't have, like, our game's just getting easier? I don't know. Maybe, I, don't, I just, I don't know. I'm just a god at those kinds of games. What can I say? Um, I have some glass cooking up here that I actually should probably take to Addy's thing. Um... But I mainly got the silk touch so that I could go hunting for some packed ice. Which I, he probably has enough of, but I don't know. Hard to say how much he'll need. Whoop. Uh-oh. That guy's firing at me. He hit me! Um, so, that I, I liked it. I enjoyed it. That's what I was playing. Uh, and finally, the other thing that I've been playing is called This is the Police. It's a very indie game. Um, very, very, very um, indie graphic style. It's fun. It's basically a police management game. So you've got 
you're the police chief and you've got a bunch of employees who are police officers and you have to send them out on missions and they give them advice for how to beat the missions and that's kind of, that sums up the whole game really um, you're dealing with the mafia and you're basically working for the mafia and the mayor and trying to make both of them happy and trying to keep your police officers happy and stuff like that at the same time and if you fire some, you'll get a thing from from the mayor, for example, that'll be like, fire all black police officers. And you've got this, like, moral dilemma, like, oh, like, I don't want to. That's so, that's so terrible. Um, the mayor is so corrupt and so, you know, bad. And so you're like, well, okay, well, I don't want to do that. Or, like, fire all women. Um, or make sure that half of your team is women. Um when there's just nothing in the labor market for for women and you're like oh my god how can i do this and so you have to lay off a bunch of people and if you fire them wrongfully then they'll take you to to uh to court essentially Ooh, i'll just take those for now <laughs> um so it's it's an interesting game uh then you got detectives who investigate stuff but it's all kind of like from a management perspective, so like you can just you see the things, this the cases come up, and then you see the results from the people that you send out on those cases. Um, it feels a lot like work somehow to me. It feels like when I'm done playing that game, I don't feel relaxed. I don't feel happy. I feel stressed out. I feel like I've just worked an eight-hour shift. It just really genuinely feels that way. So it's fun game, but at the same time, it makes you, it gives you that feeling that you just worked. So it's definitely not something that, you know, you play to relax. It's something that you have to play because you kind of like the tension. Um, and so I, I kind of like, I like that. I like it to, to a limit. There's a limit. I got to take a break from that game from time to time. They give you all the, this old timey music to listen to, some classical music, Beethoven and Chopin and stuff. So. It sort of soothes you as you work through these stressful cases and moral dilemmas and stuff. So. And then you got to deal with, like, if a police officer dies, then it's like, oh, you feel bad. Because sometimes, like, this police officer is just a really terrible police officer. Doesn't do their job right. Comes to work drunk. And you're like, oh, my God. Okay, I'm, gonna f I'm firing this guy. So you fire them, but they still work to the end of the day. Uh, so you might as well use their them, right? So you put them out on a case. They drive drunk and get killed. They then, <laughs> days later, get like a hero's burial, cannons firing type of stuff. Like, just really not really deserving of what they represented. And that, too, <laughs> just, oh, it's such a stressful game. Um, yeah, that's what I've been playing. Um, but I think I'm coming close. I don't know how long the game is. I feel like I'm halfway, if not three quarters of the way through. Uh, so that's, that's another one. I'm thinking of picking up Wolfenstein 2 to account for my now lack of Wolfenstein in my life after four hours and, uh, going to be continuing to play Pixar. I want to uh, continue to play Terraria as well. That's something I'm also recording for the channel. Jake has offered to kind of speed run me through it. Um, if we do it fast enough, he said we could probably beat the game in 20 hours. And by beat the game, I assume he just means like get OP in 20 hours. I might take him up on that. Um, series is very well received, but uh, just finding time to play that in addition to everything else is so difficult. Um, and with all of that, I kind of ran out of time, <laughs> believe it or not, to even talk about what I what I wanted to talk about today, um, which was sort of polarization of topics on the internet. Yes, that's what I wanted to. Sounds so boring, um, but really, honestly, it was more about like people who do rants and push their opinions on others who who are like. There's no flip-flopping. There's no, you know, oh, you know what? That might be, yeah, you're right. That idea is a pretty good one. I could consider that. No, it's my way or the highway attitude. The people who 
only think one way and and then don't listen to the evidence uh, for any other argument and then not only that but they go out of their way to to rant about that argument fire away online especially in social media about their one-sided argument and um, just I was gonna talk about that how when I do rants I do rants often I ranted this morning for like 20 minutes about uh, the guy ne next door with a fire engine sounding truck um, but I feel like when I do my rants about anything topical I would like to at least be open-minded uh, even if the argument I give is one-sided and I, I always try and aspire to leave it open and be unbiased and and have a neutral opinion that considers both sides I know that I don't all the time but I, I always like to feel like you know if someone comes to me with part of their argument that I would at least be able to listen to it and consider it I I don't know it's it's hard to be on the other side of the fence and then argue that people who do just that the people who aren't going to listen to to someone else's opinion necessarily um, and then rant about it in subtweets and on social media you know I, I can't say that they're entirely wrong or that they're bad um, I guess the the real problem on the internet are those who go out of their way to just scream their opinion at someone in all caps kind of thing without without any consideration for anyone else's feelings or to stop for a second to think that they may be wrong or they may be being insensitive so i i hope that when i rant i'm at least considering other people's opinions to some extent um and i know that this has come up a lot especially in like the the fiercer topics things like talking about evolution and stuff i I believe certain things about it, and I know that other people believe, believe certain things about it. Um, my belief ends where the facts end, and other people's beliefs continue where the facts end. So, it's very hard to argue one thing versus another um, without offending people in one way or another. Because there's you there's going to be a limitation to how much you accept in an argument like that i think that's what often people feel like they're running into when in reality there may be two cut and dry was this little gap always there there might actually be two cut and dry uh arguments to have i don't know anyway that it's <laughs> i i hate to offer up this topic that i was going to have a huge discussion on uh, and leave, but I gotta get to work, so <laughs> I'm not gonna re-record this three times. Uh, well, maybe we'll talk about it in more detail next time. And kind of relates to the last episode and talking about respecting others and others' opinions. Um, yeah, we'll we'll think about it. We'll maybe talk about this next time on Time Shot. Bye bye.